Now, if you're someone or if you are looking for somewhere to invest and aren't too bothered about the moral implications, private jails could be an option. The number of inmates being held in them has swelled and that's giving private shareholders bumper profits. But as RT's Marina Portnire explains, there is a huge conflict of interests. Corrections Corporation of America is the Hilton of the private prison industry, a multi-billion dollar business that's getting rich off punishment. We are CCA. The more people locked up behind bars and the longer they stay there, the more money CCA makes. Last year, the company banked a reported $1.7 billion. They are fully aware of the reality, which is that they need mass incarceration in order to stay in business. They need excessive sentences for nonviolent crime. So yes, they push for legislation that will ensure more and more people are in their facilities. With more than 2 million people currently incarcerated, the United States, Trump's China, Russia, and the rest of the world in the number of prisoners doing time. About half of those in U.S. jails are in for nonviolent offenses. Since 1990, America's private prison population has increased 1,600 percent. The war on drugs, mandatory sentencing, and a broken immigration policy have forced more people into prison. CCA has roughly 90,000 prison beds in 20 states. Jesse Lava from the watchdog group Beyond Bars says many of the company's contracts guarantee occupancy. Lockup quotas basically say that uh, if you're a private prison and you have a contract with the state or a local government, you have a guaranteed number of people in your facility. Crime could go down. It doesn't matter. The taxpayers are still on the hook and the government is still on the hook for filling up your prisons. In the land of the free, it is hard to expect the prison population to decrease as long as corporations continue profiting by keeping people locked up. Reporting from New York, Marina Portnaya, RT. Alex Friedman, managing editor of PrisonLegalNews.org, spent a decade behind bars in both private and public jails, and he explained to us why he believes privatizing prisons is such a bad idea. Served six years at a privately operated it's prison as part of the quite ironic his total, name. Uh, that I spent incarcerated. And my experience is at privately operated prison pretty much is what led me onto a, a career, if you will, fighting against the private prison industry. It is a, a very drastic experience. People come out of prison generally worse than they went in uh, due to the isolation and due to the, uh, the lack of resources and rehabilitative programs. And what that means, of course, is that when they get out, they they are more likely to make times uh, to recidivate and come back, and that benefits no one except for companies like CCA. Because if you profit from incarceration, then the more people you have locked up, the more money you can make. Alex is also the associate director of the Human Rights Defense Center, where he's campaigning against prison corporations that he says are driven only by profit. The people really benefiting from prison privatization are not the public, it's not the prisoners, it's not the states that contract with these companies necessarily. Rather, it's the corporate executives and the shareholders who own stock. When you incarcerate people for the purpose of generating corporate profit, you have a built-in incentive to incarcerate as many people as you can for as long as possible, because that's how the, the market system works. The companies have faced considerable criticism uh, for lobbying uh, governments and uh, immigration and detention officials and other government officials uh, for basically more contracts and to put more people in prison.